We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. It's a time of seismic shifts in British politics, and this is unusual because, by and large, at least in modern times, British politics has tended to bumble along without anything particularly revolutionary or different happening at any point. This is in part a reflection of the first-past-the-post system and the various institutions of British politics, which are quite resistant to change for a variety of reasons. But Brexit has really underlined all the fractures and problems in the British political system. And most recently, and perhaps most importantly, this has manifested in the form of the independent group, or Tiggers, as I like to call them, and I really hope that takes off. <laughs> you scared me. Yeah, sure I did. <laughs> Everyone's scared of Tiggers. Uh, who are you? Now, MPs breaking away from their parties isn't completely unknown. People shift from one party to another reasonably often. Um, not usually quite so often across the, the left-right divide, but from one right-wing party to another right-wing party, or one left-wing party to another left-wing party. But this isn't entirely unprecedented. Back in the 80s, a, a group of MPs split away to form the uh, SDP. Um, that ended up splitting the Labour vote and being good news for the Conservatives during Thatcher's years, unfortunately, for all their heart was in the right place. And the worry is amongst a lot of people that this will be the same kind of thing, that it will divide the votes of the opposition against the Tories. But there are Tory MPs who've joined this. The group started out as seven Labour MPs moving away to become independent. Another Labour MP has since joined, and three Conservative MPs have since joined. Now this looks very strange. How could people from different sides of the aisle come together in any way? But this is unusual in that it's not a political party. It's just an independent group of MPs who all seem to be disgusted by the kind of populist rhetoric and the, the changes, the, the racism and the other issues in their own parties. On the left, that's anti-Semitism. On the right, it's this virulent anti-immigration, anti-foreigner, xenophobic, anti-EU stance. While the Labour Party has been captured by Corbyn's harder left, momentum-y types, the Conservative Party has been captured by its ukip light ERG group. So we have two main parties who are both in the throes of an ideological spasm and if there is a commonality between the two different groups of MPs who've formed this independent group it's perhaps a more measured technocratic uh, middle ground sort of politics not that they necessarily agree on everything and I think that's the reason it's not yet a political party they don't have to agree on everything. They're independent. Each MP is operating on their own morality. And there are a few things that they come together across their former parties to agree with. Such as opposing Brexit. So they've got my support. Shit, Negro. That's all you had to say. There is nothing as important right now as stopping Brexit. It will rip this country to shreds, it will harm the poor, it will cause deaths and destruction and chaos on a scale that's never been seen in peacetime. And this is the consensus of experts on this. Anyone telling you anything else is bullshitting or are possessed by their ideology. That uh, is just just the plain plain facts. It may not be as bad as many people are fearing, but it's still going to be awful and not worth it. And the impact on British society is going to be tremendous if it does go through. So anything that undermines that gets my support, virtually <laughs> unquestioningly. Now there are questions that people have about this group, uh, about their voting history, and so on and people who are already blowing up artificial scandals and so on about their voting history. But you have to remember 
when examining their voting history that at that point they were part of the party and they were whipped into voting in line with the party and our system rewards and expects party loyalty over and above anything else. It's weird because our electoral system, and this is another issue people have brought up, you vote for a representative for your area, not by party, supposedly, though it has been captured by the party system. So you're voting for an individual to represent your area, but at the national scale it operates on party politics. So the one is broadly incompatible with the other. A lot of people are calling for these people to stand for by-elections. That's not the way our electoral system works, but then no one understood how the EU worked during the EU vote. So why I would expect anyone to understand how British politics works or the underlying principles of it, I, I don't know. Sheer, sheer optimism, uncharacteristic optimism on my part, I'm sure. But yes, they have a mixed voting record of voting for things that have harmed immigrants, that have harmed the disabled or the or the infirm or the unemployed. Their voting record is not great. But up until now, we've had no real idea what their personal likes, dislikes and decisions on any of these matters are because they were whipped to be in line with the party. So we'll, I guess we'll find out. So other than that, all we really have to go on is their statement. So let's just quickly go through that with a bit of commentary and then I'll wrap up. The independent group, our values, we believe. Ours is a great country of which people are rightly proud, where the first duty of government must be to defend its people and do whatever it takes to safeguard Britain's national security. Britain works best as a diverse mixed social market economy in which well-regulated private enterprise can reward aspiration and drive economic progress, and where government has the responsibility to ensure the sound stewardship of taxpayers' money and a stable, fair and balanced economy. A strong economy means we can invest in our public services. We believe the collective provision of public services and the NHS can be delivered through government action, improving health and educational life chances, protecting the public, safeguarding the vulnerable, ensuring dignity at every stage of life, and placing individuals at the heart of decision-making. The people of this country have the ability to create fairer, more prosperous communities for present and future generations. We believe that this creativity is best realised in a society which fosters individual freedom and supports all families. The barriers of poverty, prejudice and discrimination facing individuals should be removed and advancement occur on the basis of merit, with inequalities reduced through the extension of opportunity, giving individuals the skills and means to open new doors and fulfil their ambitions. Individuals are capable of taking responsibility if opportunities are offered to them. Everybody can and should make a contribution to society, and that contribution should be recognised. Paid work should be secure, and pay should be fair. Our free media, the rule of law, and our open, tolerant and respectful democratic society should be cherished and renewed. We believe that our parliamentary democracy, in which our elected representatives deliberate, decide and provide leadership, held accountable by their whole electorate, is the best system of representing the views of the British people. In order to face the challenges and opportunities presented by globalisation, migration and technological advances, we believe the multilateral international rules-based order must be strengthened and reformed. We believe in maintaining strong alliances with our closest European and international allies on trade, regulation, defence, security and counter-terrorism. As part of the global community, we have a responsibility to future generations to protect our environment, safeguard the planet, plan development sustainably and to act on the urgency of climate change. Power should be devolved to the most appropriate level, trusting and involving local communities. More powers and representation should be given to local government to act in the best interests of their communities. There's not really a lot to go on there. It's a fairly anodyne statement which you would expect from a formerly cross-party group of MPs who have to form a kind of 
broad coalition and only agree on a few very important things. Nonetheless, I think more MPs will join them in the days to come, probably more Labour than Conservative, because the Conservative Party tends to be much more cohesive and tribalistic. But just going quickly through these points. I mean, the first one about ours is a great country, it's just empty political rhetoric. Britain's not as flag wavy and patriotic uh, or nationalistic as America is, but it's more patriotic and nationalistic than European nations are. I think it's to do with distance from Nazism and uh, distance from Stalinism. Um, that's why America is so nationalistic, so so patriotic, and why European nations tend to be a bit wary of that kind of rhetoric. Uh, nonetheless, you probably have to say something like this in order to assuage certain people. Saying that we work best as a diverse, mixed social economy, um, again, fairly anodyne statement, nothing particularly outrageous about that. Uh, diversity will red flag some people, um, but in this context they could just as easily be talking about we should have manufacturing and services and technology and biotech and internet and you know whatever else that that's what they appear to mean and they appear to be talking about a a socialist a non-marxist socialist economy in which prosperity gets brought back around and fed back into the system to provide opportunities for people which yeah i can get behind and anyone should be able to get behind and indeed, they go on to say a strong economy means we can invest in our public services. You know, I would agree. And while I agree with some of Corbyn's aims, like renationalization and so on, unless you have a prospering economy, you cannot afford to have a strong, cohesive social safety network and opportunity provision and so on. And I fear that others of his policies could damage the prosperity of Britain, meaning we wouldn't be able to do the good socialist stuff that he wants to do. So, you know, th this is good. Um, so a lot of emphasis on individualism, individuality, uh, merit, this kind of thing, fostering creativity. Britain's traditionally always been very good at innovation, much as that seems like an oxymoron, traditionally good at doing new and different things, but it, but it is true, fashion, computer technology, all of these kind of things, particularly the creative, creative side, arts, you know, film, television, um, painting, you name it, those are things we have traditionally been good at and you know, that, that deserves encouragement. So that seems good to me. Let's talk about the barriers of poverty, prejudice and discrimination, which again will throw up red flags to certain people concerned about identity politics, but that's my concern about the the Corbynista uh, wing of the Labour Party, much like um, Bernie in the, in the States. While he might be a tradi more traditional leftist, he does seem to have been captured and subverted somewhat by the identity politics, thereby combining two of the, the worst possible sides <laughs> of the left into one, unfortunately. Um, so it might red flag some people, but I think this is less true of this group than it is of Corbyn's Labour Party. And they do talk about the extension of opportunity, talking about merit, giving people opportunity, access to skills and so on. So rather than a handout, it appears to be that they're talking about a hand up, which I can approve of, though I want basic income, or which provides a, a, you know, a level playing field for everyone to build upon. Um, it's more stuff about opportunity, free media, rule of law, open, tolerant, respectful, democratic society, empty political rhetoric, no idea what that means. <laughs> I support free speech, free expression, yeah, there's noises in that direction, but then people have different interpretations of these things. And given that some of these MPs have been subject to uh, a bit of a roasting on social media and elsewhere, uh, I doubt they're as in favour of free expression as I am. More troubling to me is their belief in parliamentary democracy. That could mean a lot of things, but I read this as being support for the electoral system as, as it stands, and I don't support that. I think we need reform. I'm hoping that I'm misreading it and that this the independent group will come out in support of 
voting reform, Lords reform, you know, things like that. So it's still a parliamentary democracy, just different ways of putting people into parliament. I'm hoping, I'm hoping more clarity will emerge as time goes on, but they're not a party. So we can't expect the kind of overall you know, push on policy that we would expect from a party. Uh, they believe in internationalism, great globalism, but it's a cautious statement on globalism. They're talking more about ways to organize this, international law, alliances, and so on. Alliances with our closest European neighbors and, and so on. Talk about protecting the environment. This is obviously important. Anyone with a lick of sense should be supporting that. Most interestingly is this um, talk about devolving powers to local government. Now, my anarchistic ideological bent um, suggests that this is a good idea from what I've observed from Scandinavian nations that tend to devolve a lot of power to, to local government, you know, very local government even. That sounds like good kinds of noises. But we can't expect policy. This isn't a political party. It may yet become one further down the line. But MPs freed from their parties and free to vote with their conscience on issues, unwhipped MPs, is an innovation and how it's kind of supposed to work but has been usurped by parties over the last centuries. So it'll be interesting just to see MPs able to speak their own mind and to support or deny policies individually. It'll just be interesting to see how that develops over the next few years because our politics is intensely tribalistic for many of the same reasons that American politics is. And having free agents is a big shake-up in and of itself. But uh, we'll see. I support this effort. I, other than Brexit, this seems to be the kind of thing that a lot of um, skeptics uh, <laughs> in, the, in the British YouTube sphere should have supported or would have supported just a few years ago. Other, other than Brexit, this sounds like the kind of thing Sargon would have supported or said that he was back then, a kind of moderate left. Um, and in the face of extremists around Corbyn on one side and the ERG and so on and UKIP and all the rest on the other side, um, this is an effort I'm throwing my weight behind and I have donated money to them. So we'll see how things go. Interesting times still, and this is going to be far from the last shake-up, and I'm sure more MPs will join them. Zang. Whatever happened to the pop in the front of me? He's over there. Spear!